Getting close ups, beauties of the dogs. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can touch. Yeah, you're never getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Off Script with Sola. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to go off script with caramels, but yes, we are not at my home because that was getting hard. You know, it was really hot, small. There was no one but me and Faki. So now we have, you know, people to wash dishes and me's things and make swaps. So, you know, it makes my life a lot easier. But to bring a little bit of home here, I brought the dogs, kind of, a little bit. They're not to scale, actually. In real life, Clementine's the bigger one. But here, this is um, my Vito stand-in and my Clementine stand-in, so we can like feel like we're there, you know? <gasps> I know, <gasps> I know, Vito. <gasps> Vito's so angry today. He's so <gasps> angry. But this is gonna be better, guys. There's, there's up, multiple ovens. This souffle did not reach maximum poof because my oven turned off in the middle of baking. The freezer has ice. But look at this cute pot. I don't have a pot like this. You know where you can get a pot like this? On food52.com. But I'm gonna show you how to make caramels. It's just learning a simple technique and once you can do it, it's gonna help you with all kinds of caramels. We're gonna make like a classic soft caramel, you know, that you can have as a chew, little, little treat, you know, hand it out to the trick-or-treaters. Once you know this technique, you can infuse the cream to make different flavored caramels. You can use this same caramel to dip apples into to make caramel apples. You could put marshmallow on top of there and make your own, uh, what's that thing called, scotch mallows? You can dip it in chocolate, pour it on top of shortbread, and make your own Twix, right? So I'm gonna show you two different caramels, a pumpkin spice latte caramel. I don't care that it's cool to not like pumpkin spice lattes, they're delicious, get over it. And we're also gonna do a classic vanilla bean caramel. And if you like what you're seeing, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Okay, let's cook. This kind of like soft, chewy caramel is really just sugar, cream, butter, a little corn syrup. We're gonna bring in the flavor by steeping the cream. So for the pumpkin spice latte caramel, we're gonna steep the cream with spices that I feel like are quintessential to pumpkin spice latte, right? So I've got my cream and I'm gonna steep it with some ginger, clove, yum, nutmeg and cinnamon. So the ginger I've already scrubbed and we're just gonna thinly slice it so we can like extract as much of that ginger flavor. Now you can infuse your cream with whatever like really strong flavors that'll come through. You don't want something really subtle because the caramel, like the caramelized sugar itself brings a lot of flavor. I think this would be really great to do with like Earl Grey tea, maybe some chamomile or lavender, any kind of spice, ooh, dried chilies, Bring a little sweet heat action to your caramels. That's another show that you can find right here on the Food 52 YouTube channel. Juicy. So ginger going in, nutmeg. We're going with like a little, a whole piece of nutmeg. Gonna give it a little, little whack. Oh gosh. We're gonna crack it just so it can infuse a little bit better. Most recipes tell you to grate nutmeg, but for infusions, I just like, I'll just crack off a piece of it. That's what my mom always did. So why the hell not, right? And some cinnamon sticks. For the cinnamon, once again, we're like opening it up, cracking it lengthwise, just to really help extract the flavor, you know? This is another thing that I just, I've always saw my mom, whenever she used cinnamon, she would crack it open like this, so you can maximize the flavor you get out of it. I'm gonna go this way too, okay. This is all gonna come to a simmer, and then you wanna let it steep at least overnight. It'll be pretty good after an hour, but like really, let it go overnight. We really want this to be super, super flavorful, otherwise it's not gonna come through in our caramel. I tried infusing some other things, like I thought it'd be really fun to make a Captain Crunch caramel, so I infused some cream with Captain Crunch. The cream was delicious, but it just didn't come through in the flavor, so go for like punchy, things, any kind of like tea, spice, rosemary, woody herbs. Rose, actual flowers. Rose, wow. <laughs> oh, you know, you could infuse the cream with rose and then put rose petals on top. Hibiscus. Beautiful. Hibiscus, that would probably give it a really nice color. Um, I think bay leaves, 
Bay leaves are like delicious and wonderful and I don't think we use them enough. This is where you get creative. Flavor up your cream and let it steep for 24 hours. Now we did one already. <laughs> so once you've steeped your cream, depending on what you've steeped into it, you might lose some of that cream to the thing. You know what I mean? Like if you put a bunch of hibiscus in there, the hibiscus is gonna suck up some of that cream and throw off your ratio. So I think it's good to strain it back into the measuring cup. Make sure you have a whole cup, maybe top it off if you need. Cause if you don't have the right ratio of cream, you're gonna end up with like kind of a tough caramel. We want a really nice tender caramel that's gonna be, you know, delightful to eat. Now with these whole spices, I found that you don't lose much cream, but I think that it's just a good habit to check, you know? You never know. So there's no pumpkin in pumpkin spice latte. There's no pumpkin. It's just the spices that go into pumpkin pie. And I know that this was like a controversy like maybe a few years ago, but I don't care. I think it tastes really good. Warm spices with coffee is a really good combo. And the pretty much, I think what Starbucks made was like chai with coffee, right? That's what they made. And, and they've ruined the, those wonderful spices. Oh, you can make chai latte caramels, right? Infuse some tea in here too. Wow, get crazy. Okay, so I'm squishing the spices because a lot of the like really, really tasty flavorful cream is gonna be like the stuff that's like stuck in the spices. So I'm gonna like take my time and squish off as much of the cream from these spices as possible. The strainer might be a little small, but we're gonna make it work. It's comedic. Okay, now let's see. So we lost a couple ounces just in this little simple infusion, so I'm gonna to top it up to make sure we have a full cup when we go into making our caramel. It smells very spicy, yeah. Yeah. All you need to make caramel is sugar. Caramel is just what happens when you apply heat to sugar. It does melt, but what's actually happening is something called thermal decomposition. And then the sugar molecules break down and they create like lots of new flavors. That's why caramel doesn't taste just like sugar. It has all this like depth and richness from the browning. Caramel, delicious. Now, uh, you can really change the texture of caramel based on how much fat or liquid you add to it. Straight up, when you just melt sugar, it cools down and it's like rock hard, super solid. Not something you wanna bite into. But when you add cream and butter, you soften it up. And you can really adjust the texture of the caramel by how much fat you add. So this, this amount of fat and cream is going to give us a really nice like sliceable caramel that you can, you know, enjoy on its own. You wanna make it saucy? Add more cream. Are you like into the Werther's original hard caramel? Add less fat. I don't know who likes this, but maybe somebody. Once you learn how to make a caramel, there's like so many things that you can do. So just think about this more as like a technique lesson, you know? So you understand caramel and then you can go forth and make toffee and brittle and flan. Know what I'm saying? Hardware. A lot of times when you're making caramel, it can be kind of hard to melt the sugar evenly and like brown the sugar evenly. And sometimes you get like crystallization and it can get like chalky and weird. So I think that the most important thing is start with a heavy bottom pot. That's gonna make sure that it melts evenly. And I like to always go for something like high and tight. I love straight sides. What happens with the straight sides? When your caramel heats up, there's gonna be like steam, right? It's gonna get steamy. You put the lid on it, that steam rolls down the side of the pan and like naturally washes the sides of the pan to prevent crystallization. So I always like a high and tight pan. I've noticed that when you go wide, like if you try to make caramel in a skillet, it makes it really hard to melt evenly. You can get little, little pockets of crystallization. So high and tight makes life easier for you. Now there's two ways to melt the sugar. Some people go dry, which is where you add a little bit of sugar at a time, like maybe that much. You don't add any liquid and you let that liquefy and then you add more sugar and more sugar and then you can make a caramel without any water at all. I like that method for smaller amounts of caramel, but it does require like constant vigilance 
like you must stare at the pot the whole time. So when I'm making a larger amount, like more than half a cup, I go for the wet method, which is what we're doing today. So for the wet method, we add our sugar to the pan. I'm gonna add a little bit of corn syrup. This is just to help with texture. Technically, you don't need any corn syrup, but we want soft chews, so you really need the corn syrup to make it pleasant. And then a little bit of water. How much water you use actually doesn't matter because we're not gonna achieve caramel until all that water evaporates. So the water is just there to help us evenly dissolve the sugar. If you use a lot of water, it's gonna take longer for it to cook down. And if you use less, it just requires a little bit more babysitting. I like just enough to moisten everything. Let's get our heat on, medium high. I'm like very particular when we make caramel. First, it's very important when you stir and when you don't stir. That's where people get in trouble. So. We've got our water, sugar, and corn syrup. And now I'm going to stir with the fork. The reason why I use a fork is the fork forces you to stir in like little circles. Really keep it tight. We don't want to splash too much sugar syrup up along the sides of the pan. So the way that crystallization happens is when you're stirring vigorously, some of the sugar water splashes up on the side of the pan where it kind of dries out and returns back to its original sugar crystal form and then falls into the pot. And then that becomes like a seed crystal where the rest of the sugar just like collects and the whole thing will seize. It, I've had it happen so many times where I'm not paying attention and a whole pot of sugar just turns back into sugar. So we're just gonna stir until we're mostly dissolved. I want you to just learn how to make a caramel and then you can make any caramel it, using this exact same method. Regardless of what the recipe tells you, the part of like making the sugar into caramel, you can follow your own technique there. Okay, so now that you can see we're not fully dissolved, it's still a little bit cloudy. Everything is moistened. So now what I do is I cover it, and now we're not gonna touch it. We're not gonna touch it at all. No touching. Now when you touch, this is the point where you can cause crystallization. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it cook until it's completely dissolved and just starting to brown. That's how you know that all of the moisture has cooked off. We're gonna keep this lid on because as this cooks, the moisture is gonna evaporate, come up to the lid, roll down the sides of the pan, and it's gonna wash down its own sides. It can take care of itself. We don't need to brush it down. Once we begin some browning, that's when you know that there is no moisture left and that risk of crystallization is gone. It's okay to peak. It's not like making rice. So you can peak if you want, just don't agitate it at this point, you know? It just needs to do its thing. We'll let it chill. While the caramel does its thing, I'm gonna line my pan. You can pour your caramel into whatever you want. You know, you want really nice, beautiful squares, go for an eight by eight pan. Do you wanna make like cute little rosettes and you have a silicone mold that's shaped like roses? Sure, put it in there. Put it in whatever you want, honestly. But the main thing is you wanna make sure that it'll come out. So I'm gonna go for a nine by 13, because these caramels, I want them to set up really nice and thin so that we can roll them up into little coils, yeah? It's gonna be cute, you'll see. So I'm gonna smoosh some butter on. So the first layer of butter is just there to help hold our parchment down. You really wanna make sure your parchment is really nice and secure. Otherwise, what can happen is when you're pouring the caramel in, the, the caramel can like sneak underneath the parchment and like get stuck between, then you'll have like a layer of parchment in between your caramel. It's happened to me and it's very sad. And now I'm gonna line the bottom and two sides with one piece of parchment. I don't worry about that one side because we can just use a, a, an offset spatula to loosen it from that bit. But So now just make sure you take your time, get it really nice and flush to the bottom of the pan so we don't have any like caramel leakage running away from us. And then we're gonna secure it with a couple of clips. You can just leave your parchment sticking out, no big deal. But I saw online Ed Kimber, the boy who bakes. This is his trick to secure the parchment down so it doesn't flop around and you can actually bake with these because they're, they're metal. So this is a great way to like make your life easier. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on the other side as well, but you really don't need it. But it's kind of nice, it gives a little extra buttery flavor and extra security from stickage. Pan prepped. 
Now we just wait, we keep waiting. So do you see how much that's like vigorously steaming? This steam right here, this is washing down the sides of the pan. It's making sure that your caramel doesn't crystallize. It's like taking care of itself. Let's take a peek though, why the hell not? Oh, yes. We're just simmering now. We still haven't achieved browning, but we're just gonna let it keep doing its thing. At this point, while it's like really actively simmering, there's still quite a lot of moisture in there. This is where crystallization happens. I do have like a salted caramel blondie recipe that so many people DM me about because they had so much trouble with the caramel, which is why we're doing this today. Just, we're just focusing on the caramel. You're gonna get this. Now, you can see that the syrup looks really thick and viscous. Everything is like evenly melted. Now we're gonna head into browning. I don't see any browning, but I can already smell it, so I know that it's beginning to happen. And this part goes pretty quickly. So we're gonna, once we get to this point, we're gonna watch it. And if it starts to brown a little unevenly, you can kind of swirl the pan at this point. You could get in there and stir a little bit, a little bit, because we know, because of how thick it is and how slow and lazy those bubbles are looking, we know that the moisture is cooked off. And we're just looking at sugar syrup at this point. Once this is the color we want, we're going to deglaze the caramel with cream and butter. So this looks like it's not a lot of sugar, but you need to use a bigger pan than you think, because once you add the cream and the butter, it's going to really foam and get really like, it's going to explode on you. If you want to minimize that foaming, a lot of people like to warm up the cream a touch. Like if you've got a microwave, you could zap this for a second or even um, warm it up in a pot on the side. I usually, I don't do that. I don't know. It's gonna be a little bubbly and I'm okay with that. If you wanna make this non-dairy, you could use like coconut cream and co and vegan butter or coconut oil, but not in these ratios. If you're gonna use coconut cream and vegan butter, you're gonna have to play around with the ratios. The recipes really do like change a lot because vegan butter and like coconut cream don't have the same percentages of like moisture and fat. So it's not gonna be like a straight one to one sub, but you can figure it out. I believe in you, you know? And like worst case scenario, if it like sets up super hard, you can like gently warm it and add more cream. I've done that before. You'll be fine. Okay, it's like really slow and lazy. We're just waiting. You just gotta sit and wait and hang out. Clementine's into it, you know? Let's do it. Butter. Butter going in. Whoa. I'm gonna turn off the heat. We're gonna add the cream. Crazy. What a good time. It's kind of crazy. It like more than doubled in volume once we added the cream and the butter, which is why you need a bigger pot. Now, now it's safe to add our salt, regardless of what kind of salt you have at this point. We have no fear of crystallization. You can add salt, you can stir. I'm gonna add the heat back on. Come on, Clem. Be useful. Now we're gonna attach a candy thermometer and we are gonna cook this to between 245 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how we know that it's gonna be like perfectly set and sliceable, but like tender. And now we wait. At this point, you can stir if you want. You're not gonna need to, but you can. Do you wanna make caramel apples with this? Okay, so what you do is get your apples on sticks, boil some water, dunk the apples in a little boiling water, just like a quick dip, just to remove any wax that might be on there, which could prevent the caramel from sticking. And then once you get to 245, so before, before you get to 245, make sure you have a, an ice bath close by. Once you get to 245, grab your pot of caramel, dunk it in the ice bath to stop the cooking, but you don't want to like solidify it. We're just trying to stop it, put it back on the low, low setting, or maybe even just like turn it off. There might be enough residual heat on your stovetop and then start dipping your apples. And as you dip, it's gonna thicken and the caramel's gonna like set up a little bit. So just turn the heat back on a little bit, loosen it up, keep dipping, dunk it in some toppings, drizzle with some chocolate. It'll be a lot of fun. Oh, we didn't even talk about safety. Danger, danger. If you're a child, don't do this. No one under the age of 16 should make caramel, right? No, I don't think so. It's very dangerous. Oh, so I worked at this one place where we had to make sugar. We made eggshells out of this sugar called 
mannitol, which is an alcohol sugar that gets super, super hot without caramelizing, like super hot. And we'd have to pour this mannitol into these egg molds and swirl it around. And one guy spilled it on his hand and it went right through, burned a hole right through his hand. Regular sugar won't do that, but it's still not safe. Whenever I make caramel, I make sure nobody is in the kitchen, no dogs, no children, and I tell everyone in the household that I'm making caramel because you don't want someone surprising you, sneaking up on you in the kitchen when you're doing something like this because it's not dangerous, but it's not safe, you know? Look at that, it's like magma. We just made sugar magma. So once we hit 245, 250, we're going right in. So there's two places where you can go off script. You can flavor your cream, and then the other place is with toppings. But you don't wanna add any toppings right now because they're just gonna sink. So we're gonna let this set up at room temp for an hour, and you'll see that it's gonna be, it's gonna still be a little bit sticky and pliable, but not fully set. That's the perfect time to put stuff on top. This one's gonna get some freeze-dried coffee. Um, the vanilla caramel is gonna get flaky salt, but you can like go crazy, do like ground nuts cereal. That was delicious. Freeze-dried fruit dried rose petals, dried herbs. Ooh, you could even like maybe candy some sage. Wouldn't that be like crumble that on top? That's the part where you can like really have fun and you can like really fancy it up. Roll them in cocoa. I don't know. This is where you can get crazy. Cover it in gold leaf. I don't know, but we're not going to touch it right now. We're going to let it hang, for, hang out for an hour. And in the meantime, we're going to show you how to make a classic vanilla bean salted caramel. For the other caramel, I'm gonna show you the classic vanilla bean with a little flaky salt. This is the caramel you know and love. And I, I think this is still like my favorite. I love vanilla. I feel like I've already told you how much I love vanilla. Vanilla will be gone soon. Climate change, it's real. So I like really like to just enjoy vanilla as much as possible right now. So we're gonna go for like the good stuff. This is the time to break out your vanilla beans. So we're gonna start by steeping our cream with the vanilla bean. You can let it steep for an hour, but I think you should let it really go overnight. Maybe even stick it in your fridge, leave it there for a couple of days. We wanna like get all of that vanilla flavor, yeah? We have one that, that was already taken care of the night before, so this is really nice and vanilla-y. And you can see all those seeds in there. Amazing, delicious. So I'm gonna strain this out. We have our vanilla cream, whoa. Don't discard your vanilla bean. I never, ever, ever throw out my vanilla beans. You can like reuse them forever. They'll keep giving you flavor. Pop it in sugar for sure, but you can also pop it in whiskey for like a little whiskey vanilla cocktail. You can also pop it in maple syrup, pop it in honey. And then also, once you think you're done with your pods, rinse them, let them dry and save them all. Once you have all of your pods saved, blitz it up with a little bit of like corn syrup and make your own vanilla paste. It, it never runs out of flavor. You can just keep going. You know, I really want the vanilla to come through. I think I'm gonna stop it right here. I don't want it to be too dark because I want this to be about the vanilla. You can deglaze it at any point from light brown to burnt. It's up to you. It's not gonna affect the texture. Okay, cream going in. This time it's our vanilla cream. Wow, look at that, wild. This is why you need a big pot. I wanna make sure I get all of it. And same deal, we're gonna attach our candy thermometer and cook this until it comes up to 245. And then, so this caramel, I'm gonna pour into an eight by eight inch pan because I want these to be like thicker because we're just gonna cut them into the classic squares. And same deal, we're gonna pour this into our prepared pan. Now, I didn't add any salt into this caramel because after this sets for about an hour, we're gonna sprinkle it with flaky salt. So we get a little crunch and our salt. For your pumpkin spice caramels, you could totally just put it in an eight by eight pan and cut it into squares, but I wanted to make it a little extra cute so we're gonna try and roll it up so we end up with a little swirl. I saw an old Ina garden recipe where she did this and I thought it was cute. So we're gonna go for that. So these caramels have been sitting at room temp for about an hour, but 
To get the perfect swirl, you really need the caramel to get to the right consistency. It's set, but it's still a little pliable, so I can like leave a fingerprint. If you have like a really nice room temperature, it'll be okay in an hour, but it's a little bit warm. You might need to put it in the fridge for a little bit, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it because you don't want it to get too hard because then you won't be able to curl it up, but you don't want it to be too soft because then it'll just squish. So this is what we're going for. It can hold an indent. Huh? 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 All right, and now I'm going to remove this from the pan. Okay, so now we're going to cover this whole thing in this you can use espresso powder or instant coffee. If you've got like the kind of coffee that's in big granules, just grind it so it's nice and fine. We had some espresso powder that was already really fine. So I'm just gonna dust this all over the surface in one even layer. So you get this like really bitter coffee center for our pumpkin spice latte vibes. and you will really, really, really taste the coffee here, which is what I want, you know? We're gonna deliver the promise. Okay, just even it out a little bit. So the surface is still a little bit tacky because it's not totally chilled or set, so it'll stick really nicely. Now I'm gonna divide it in half lengthwise, and then each of these long rectangles we're gonna coil into a log. And then once we have our logs, we're gonna let it chill completely and then portion it into little coins of caramel. Hmm? Whoa, that was a sharp knife. We went right through the paper. I wasn't expecting that. I don't have sharp knives anymore because I haven't sharpened my knife since last March. So lift up this edge and see how I'm immediately like smushing it over. Whenever you're coiling something up, in order to get a really nice shape, it's all about how you start it. Now I'm gonna use the paper to help me kind of form this log. Whoa, see? Okay, all right. So we're using the paper to help us, just like when you roll sushi, how you use the mat to help you get a coil. And now we've got this like log and we're gonna let this firm up all the way. And I'm just gonna give it a little, you know, just kind of close that seam up. And we're just gonna pop this back in here and we're gonna let it chill. And then I'm gonna do the other side. Cool, boom, next one. Give it a little roll. Now this is gonna chill an hour or you know, forever. Slice it when you feel like it. This is my favorite part. We're going to cut and wrap. It's a little tedious, but I think it's super fun because it's kind of like arts and craftsy. I'm gonna peel back some of this paper. Now, if you want really nice clean edges, you can take off these ends because they're, they're not like totally straight or you can just not, you know what I mean? It's up to you. I'm gonna cut these into just about an inch. If at any point these feel like they're getting a little too soft, you can go ahead and pop them back in the fridge. But also if they feel like they're a little bit too hard, just let them sit on the counter for like five minutes and they're gonna be good to go. I think this part is super, super fun. If you wanna be crazy, you can grease up a cookie cutter and punch them out into different shapes. I think that's a little wild, like even for me. So after each piece, I like to do a little scooch with my knife to like give it a little room so they don't stick to each other. See what I'm saying? It's just a little wiggle. Boom. And then we do the, the best part. I think the best part of this whole thing, our entire caramel journey, is the packaging. So you can get super cute with this. We're just using some like parchment paper, but you can, I don't know, get like different color paper and pop it in there, wrap it up. Super cute. Oh my gosh, wow. Don't you feel like we're like back in the 40s or something? A little penny candy? Throw it in a jar, send it to your friends, uh, give it to your trick-or-treaters. They probably won't eat homemade candy, right? Give it to trick-or-treaters you know. 
So now we're gonna cut up our pumpkin spice ones. With this one, I'm gonna put these in these little cups. If you don't feel like going through all that effort of folding up the papers, you can get these cute little candy cups, make it a little easier for yourself. So to maintain this log shape, you're gonna need to turn it like a quarter turn after every slice, cause it's gonna wanna just like smoosh on you. And we wanna kinda maintain this log. I lost the end a little, but we're gonna go for like, I don't know, quarter inch thick slices. We get a little swirl. We'll see the swirl a little bit more once we get further along. You don't wanna get too thick. I don't think anyone wants a huge piece of caramel, you know? It's a lot. See how I'm using the entire length of the blade? That's exactly how you should be cutting your roast tenderloins. We got, we got tips for your meat here too. I think these are best stored in the fridge. They're gonna keep their shape and like stay nice and fresh for you pretty much forever. Caramel, like, caramel doesn't really go bad. Store it in your fridge indefinitely. <laughs> and I think for best texture, I like to let it come to room temperature for about an hour before you're eating it. If you wanna ship these to people, pop them in the freezer before you ship it. So then by the time it gets to where it needs to go, it's still like in good shape. I wouldn't ship these in July though. This is a winter candy. Dogs are here, caramels are here. Let's give it a taste. I'm gonna start with our little pumpkin spice latte dude with this little coffee core. Come here, buddy. It's uh, very warm here today. <laughs> mm. Okay, I do think it tastes a lot like a pumpkin spice latte. So much coffee flavor from that coffee powder and those spices really come through with that overnight steep. And it's like really soft and chewy and melts in your mouth and it's exactly what you want from a caramel. I think that the little coffee powder surprise is the coolest part and the bitterness from that coffee really offsets the sweet caramel. I think it's a good combo, I'm into it. Okay, vanilla, my favorite flavor of everything. The greatest product that Earth has given us is vanilla. People think saffron's cool, no, vanilla. Mm. It's really incredible how much vanilla flavor is really in there. It really comes through. You've gotta give it an overnight steep. I know I said in the recipe you could do it an hour, I really don't recommend it. Give it the full overnight. I get so much floral vanilla coming through with that caramel. And for me, this is like the perfect texture. It's really tender, soft, melts in your mouth, sticky, chewy, but you can like totally adapt this to your own preference. If you want it to be a little bit more stiff, you could cook it a little bit higher temp. Just take it to like 255 and it's incredible how different the texture will be. You could even just decrease the cream just a touch. Do you want a sauce? Add like an extra quarter cup of cream and you have like the best caramel sauce. But more importantly, I hope that you learned the technique of how to make caramel that you can take with you, you know, on all of your caramel journeys, you know, caramel blondie, flan, tart to tan. This episode was really more to teach you about that technique so you can go have fun or make caramel apples, whatever you wanna do. Next episode, I'm gonna show you how to make stuffing. Take stuffing off script, off to wherever you want. So tune in next time. Be sure to like and subscribe, you know, set that notification bell so you can see when I'm here next time. And thanks for joining me. Although my favorite thing to do when I was a kid, when I was like really too young to do this, was to make caramel in the microwave. On I, My mom had this Pyrex glass dish and I would put sugar on there and microwave it. Cause we never had candy or dessert or anything and I really had a sweet tooth. So I was determined to make candy by any means necessary. So I would melt sugar on this Pyrex dish in the microwave and 99% of the time it was fine, but one time it exploded and I got caramel all across my arms and like I pulled the dish out and then it exploded. So just don't do this when you're a child because that's when you make terrible decisions like that. 